Okay, so we'll continue with the grid layout. Before we do that, we thought it would be sensible to just do a recap of the app structure to make it easy to follow. So at the very top level of our app, uh, we'll have an index.js that's merged into the index.html. You notice document get element by ID root, and it's going to replace that with this. And so, so far, we haven't changed this file, right? This particular file index.js, um, no. Yeah, no. this is boilerplate. Um, so it brings in app. We've modified app. So yep. our app now brings in C3G header, the grid example component, and then the footer. App has its own CSS, which has nothing in it. Okay, so we're not overriding anything there. We did, however, override some styles in index CSS, which is imported into index.js. We declared some CSS custom properties, and uh, we're using those throughout. And then uh, the header and footer are simpler components, so we'll take a quick look at those again. So header just returns a header element with the word header in it, with class name C3UG header, who is declared in its own CSS file in the same pattern. So it's got a background color, padding. Ditto with footer. I'm not even open footer. It's more of the same right now. It will change, but it's more of the same. And then finally, we made our grid example with six divs, each having its own class. And uh, the only thing we changed was the color to make it so they're all distinct colors. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six with their own distinct background colors. Uh, one is a white background, so he's actually got a color. So color is the foreground color, the font color. Background color, as its name implies, is background color. For all of them, we just threw 40 pixels of padding on there. That will change, but for now, we'll keep 40 pixels of padding. And, and <clears throat> sorry, just to just to make sure people don't uh, aren't confused, we've uh, off video added divs four, five, and six, and changed the color of six. So you yes. didn't miss anything. Oh, correct, correct. So in grid example, we've got an H1 and six divs. All right, so that's a good starting point. Now let's get into CSS grid. So in a grid layout, what we're going to do is make a grid container. So let's do that. A grid example container. Okay, there's nothing in there yet. Default display would be what? Block. Block, right. But we don't want block, we want grid. Okay, uh, references for CSS grid. I've got a couple tabs open. Um, if you do a Google search for CSS grid, the very first link you get is a great page, complete guide to CSS grid on cssturks.com. The other one is on the MDM, CSS grid layout. I have both these open. Highly suggest you go through them. One thing that's kind of neat about the first of these is they actually show you on the left properties for the parent, which is a grid container and properties for the children. So I can define an element. Everything in the grid system you have to say, well, am I defining this in terms of my children or am I defining it for myself relative to my children? So for the container, we're saying its display is grid. What we're telling it is that we want to lay out its content. And grid template columns will allow us to define how we lay out multiple columns of content. Now, if I look here, our app right now, they're stacking vertically. We didn't tell it to do otherwise. It was display block, which was the default. Now we're going to tell it display grid. And there's a lot of different ways to do this, but we can do it in terms of fractions. Okay, so, so back to our wireframe. What are we doing here? We're making a three column layout. So let's go ahead and make a three column layout. Great example container. I'm just going to save it. Ooh. Wow. How hard was that? That is slick. Okay. And I, I can go on into perpetuity and it'll still lay them out in three columns, right? Um, three column layout. Check. One line of code. <clears throat> well, a couple lines of code. And I, I screwed something up here. What the heck did I do? Have I got a. You just did a paste. You pasted. You pasted I sure did. Oh, that, that was quite intentional. Here, backspace a couple times. Uh, 
I want to take grid example and duplicate that. What's the errors giving me? Come on. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, adjacent elements. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Um, in React, when you make a component, it's supposed to return one top level element. Um, and so I could wrap it in a div like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. I don't want to do that because I don't want to introduce an extra one in the DOM. So React has something called a fragment. So I can make a React fragment. Here we are. And that React fragment um, solves the adjacent elements issue. Um, so I can have this and this, which are adjacent elements, but it doesn't put anything extra into the div. Because with HTML, there's absolutely no problem with this, right? It's just a React component thing. So save and go back to our terminal. It is happy. So I should have two of the same. And that's okay, right? I got grid example, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's, Let's just say, say grid example one, grid example two. Okay, so we got grid example one, three columns. Okay, grid example two. Next on deck, we want the first column to be wider than the second. Now let's just say for fun that this is twice as wide as this. You know, back in the CSS grid, sort of, sort of the grid framework days, it was often done with a 12 column grid. 12 columns, yep. Because the math happens to work. So you'd, you'd have some awareness of how wide is a column and what's the better width between them. Well, the challenge is there's a million devices and it gets wacky with sizing, right? So that, what they end up doing then in, say, the last decade is they make, well, I want it when it's the smallest, meaning like mobile. Now, what should it be when it's a little bigger than that, but not quite as big? Okay, and what about when it's a little bigger than that? So you'd end up putting like several classes on the same div, for example, in your layout to tell it to, to lay itself out differently for different sizes, right? Read the screen size, yeah. Yeah, once again, um, there's, there's easier ways to do this. So what we're gonna do, let's go in here and uh, start by, so let's just assume desktop, okay? So assume at, at desktop, you want it to look like this. Uh, as you can see from our wireframes, our intent is, when it's mobile for things to stack vertically. But just for fun, let me show you how to do it for desktop and then we'll talk about resizing. All right, we're gonna do grid example two. We'll give it a different class, grid example two. Uh, oh, sorry, grid example. We'll make a grid example container too, okay? So that. Do display grid, grid template columns. Two fractions, one fraction. You're exactly right, sir. Wow. I'm picking this stuff up quick. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I referenced something wrong. So, yeah, okay. cool. no, I missed a dot. Oh, That's all. Here we are. Dot. Okay. There you are. Cool. Okay. Next up, bat. Can you guess how to do this one? Your, your brain's melted, I know. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going to have to help me out here. Okay. Gr grid can help you here too. Um, grid's pretty cool. What we're going to do now is do something a little bit different. But by the way, for mobile, we, we'll do a CSS media query. And so for desktop, we would do it this way. And when the width is narrower, we would do it a different way. Okay, so keep that in mind. This isn't, this video is not showing you how to do a full page layout. We'll, we'll actually do that as we move on. This is just to introduce sure. CSS grid a little bit. So we're still desktop only. Uh, we'll do media queries as we move forward to, to handle mobile. So what we wanna do now is let's, let's make grid example three. That indentation, right? Let's fix my indentation so I can follow it. That's what I need to copy right there. And for example, three. For example, three. I'm not going to bother saving it yet. Okay. Let's. I'll make it the same for a second. Let me actually save it, save it, and it'll force it to render. It's not what we want, but we'll just get it to render. Okay, so grid example three is basically the same as grid example two. Um, and we'll, we'll, let's give these names, right? 
let's call this uh, something like that. Okay, fair mm -hmm. enough. Or yep. Two thirds, one third, whatever you want to call it. All right. So grid example three. Um, That's the brain melter. Okay, so designer handed you this wireframe, you need to build it. Um, what we'll do now is I'm gonna move grid example three down here in the file. We'll keep it styles together. Okay, so we need to give things a name and there's something called grid template areas. Grid template areas, allows us to give named locations in our CSS grid, which is pretty awesome. And the grid template areas, um, we can have different layouts for different parts of it. So what we'll do is define them thusly. We're going to, let's, let's give these arbitrary components some names. Let's, uh, Let's mentally, we'll just call them one, two, three, four, five, and six. So by that, I mean, this is gonna be one. I guess you can see it. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll give each one of them a name and we're gonna name the grid template areas the same. So let's let's call them uh, so we want three one and I'm gonna do a single row to start with, okay? So let's do, um, uh, we'll do the, our own styles, three, one, three, two, three, three, because it's example three. Um, here, how about EX three, one, EX three, two, EX three, three. You, yeah. More, more sensible, right? You caught my mistake. You're as good as a compiler. Um, okay, so then we're gonna make, Great example three. Great example container three. And EX three one. EX three two. EX33, let's lose these three for a second. Let me lose these last three divs. Let's get a single row laid out the way we'll want it to. Okay. 